Okay, so let me first uh, recall some of the things we saw yesterday. Um, so the first result I presented yesterday was that uh, the small model property in, in for, 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 two, for two variable fragment of first order logic, in fact, uh, in our construction, we started from an arbitrary model of a formula phi um, and constructed, constructed a new model uh, whose domain was a subset of the domain of, of the original model. The one types of elements were retained from the original, original model and uh, the on, only, only some two types uh, have been exchanged, yes, modified. So uh, in, in fact, th this construction guarantees also some, some additional properties uh, that the set of one types realized in both structures are identical. The, the, all, all the types which are realized in the original structure are also uh, realized in this new small model and each non-royal type uh, uh, recall that the type is uh, royal if, if it is realized in a structure exactly once. Yes? So each non-royal type from, from the original structure is realized in this new structure at least twice. So this, is, this, this was the first, the first property we obtained yesterday. Um, another simple result about two-variable logic which will be useful today it's, it's a very simple uh, thing uh, that if we have an arbitrary model of a formula phi, then we uh, and, and we take an arbitrary non-royal one type realized in this model, then we can add additional copy of this of this one type to the model. So this is the second result from yesterday, and a uh, result, very simple observation in fact, and then we considered two variable guarded fragments with equivalence relations in guards. Uh, let me recall the normal form of, of the formulas which we are interested in. So we may say that there exists an element satisfying something. Uh, we may impose restrictions on connections between pairs of connected elements. So we may say that for all x, y, if they are connected, either by an equivalence relation, which is, uh, which the equivalence relation re re relations are denoted by E i, or by a relation which is not required to be equivalence, which such relations are, are denoted uh, by R i or similarly. Uh, so so f for connected elements, we may impose some additional restrictions on, 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 on the connections between them, yes? And there are formulas which, uh, mm, which say that some elements satisfying some at atomic uh, properties require the so-called witnesses. Yes, for all x, if x satisfies some atomic formula, then there exists y connected to this x, either by EI or uh, equivalence relation or, or uh, non-equivalence relation. Uh, and, 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 and this connection should satisfy some property. Yes? Uh, in, my, in my today talk, uh, yesterday we considered the general satisfiability problem for two-variable guarded fragment with equivalence guards. Today, we will we'll, uh, consider the finite satisfiability problem. And to simplify the presentation, I will not consider the, this, these two types of conjuncts. Uh, it has those conjuncts which, which may require witnesses connected not necessarily equivalently yes, to, 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 uh, to, an, to an element. So in fact, what we can uh, what we can say we can only only uh, say about uh, require witnesses inside equivalence classes. Yes. Uh, this simplification uh, is not crucial. It is very easy to add to add these two these two types of conjuncts, and I, 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 it will be just left as, as an exercise. Mm, one uh, one one and an another thing is a notation I sometimes use by phi phi with superscript ek, I denote the fragment of this formula, uh, which is related to, uh, which imposes something on, um, something in, in equivalence classes uh, of, of the relation ek, yes? So it contains all the formulas which have ek as guards, plus, plus those universal formulas 
uh, uh, guarded by non-equivalence relations be because they also may restrict, uh, uh, they also may, may have influence on the shape of E1 class here because uh, in, in this EY, e, e, EI class, because, uh, or e, sorry, EK class, because in this EK class, of course, we, we may have uh, another binary connections. One important, re ah, one, one important restriction on, on our language is that we allow these equivalence relations only as guards, yes? So this is why, why, why we call this variant equivalent, we, uh, variant with equivalence guards. Uh, so uh, EI relations cannot appear in these formulas psi. But in, in the formulas psi, we may have additional uh, realizations of, uh, additional, um, uh, we, we may use uh, those no, no, non-equivalence symbols. Uh, another thing I, we observed yesterday is that, in fact, that there is a close relation between models for uh, formulas for two-variable logic and equivalence classes in models for formulas of two-variable guarded fragment with equivalence guards, yes? In, in, in a single equivalence class uh, in a model of, of GF2 plus EG formula, we may, we may do everything we do in first order logic, yes? Uh, for example, if we have a for, uh, in first order logic with two variables, if we have a two-variable formula, not, not necessarily guarded, then and if, we, if we translate it to the guarded fragment by using a dummy equivalence guard, say E1, yes, E1 is a symbol which, uh, which uh, is not a member of the signature of this formula. Uh, and simply we add, this, uh, we add guards to, to these quantifiers here, then we obtain uh, a formula whose equivalence classes have to be models of, of this formula. Yes, so this, there is a close re relationship between um, these two things. <coughs> and what we do yes did yesterday for general satisfiability we started from an arbitrary model of GF2 plus EG formula and uh, un un unraveled it into a, a tree-like way, uh, providing, starting from, from some element and then providing uh, classes for, for this element um, in such a way that any pair of elements is connected in, in this tree-like model at most by one equivalence relation. This is the place where, where we use the, this, this restriction on, on um, on the usage of equivalence uh, symbols, yes, they, they can be, they can appear only in guards. So we can do such things. We can unravel the uh, unravel uh, the model. Then we can uh, we can make the classes exponentially bounded, and uh, we can make this model regular. Yes. So um, and, and this 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 uh, 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 implies that there is a simple a simple decision procedure for for this problem. Uh, working in non-deterministic exponential time. Uh, okay, so today I, I will talk about the finite satisfiability problem. As you see, starting from an arbitrary model, even finite, we usually, we usually end uh, in, in, in an infinite model. Yes? So um, such, such approach is uh, not very promising here. And instead of three unravelings, we will, we will uh, describe the properties of models by using systems of equivalence, uh, systems of uh, linear equations. Uh, let, let me first show you that there are some differences in, in this satisfiability and finite satisfiability problems. For example, in the case of uh, satisfiability, general satisfiability, we obtained uh, a property that uh, every satisfiable formula has a model with exponentially bounded classes. Yeah? Uh, so, so this property cannot be obtained in the case of finite models. Uh, a very simple example here, we will construct a formula delta n of uh, length uh, polynomial in n, uh, such that it's every model will, will contain a full binary tree of depth 2 to the n, and then we say, we will say that all leaves of, the tr of, the, of this tree are members of the same class the number of leaves will, will be doubly exponential, so, so it will imply that uh, there exists a doubly exponential class. Okay, so, so the models will look like this. Uh, we'll have an element, we, we say that there exists an element satisfying uh, unary, predict, unary relation root, and for each, uh, and, and, and we will think that uh, each of the elements encodes one a binary number from, from the set zero up to two to the n minus one, 
Su such, an, such, such numbers can be encode, encoded in an usual way using n unary predicates. Uh, and I explained yesterday we, that we can count uh, up to 2 to the n. We can say that a pair of elements uh, encodes numbers which differ by 1. So we may say that for every element mm, from an even level of the tree, there are two elements on the next level uh, connected to, to this element by red relation, E1 relation. One of them is in L, one in not in L to, 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 have, uh, to, to, to ensure that there are really two, two such elements. And from uh, odd levels, we require two elements um, connected by blue relation, relation E2. Uh, and we want to enforce that models really are really um, complete binary trees, yes? So we have to ensure that there is no such situation that uh, two elements from the same level, say this uh, gray element and this gray element, use the same element on the next level as, as, as the witness, yes? for example, this one. And to do this, we say that uh, elements from, say, uh, even level, like even level, this is 0, 1, 2, so for example, from the second level, um, that, that there are no two elements on this level which are connected by a red relation. Yes? Such reusing of, of a witness will, would cause that, because of transitivity of, of the red relation, that the two, element, two gray elements would become e uh, related by this red rela relation. So we simply say that if there are two elements related by red relation, E1, and they uh, belong to an even level, to check uh, if a level is even or odd, we just look at a least significant bit, then they are really the same element, yes? So they cannot be distinct. So this ensures that we have really a, a complete binary tree. Uh, and then we, we, we have to say that all, all leaves of, of this tree are related by, by, by this blue relation here. We cannot say di directly, yes, for all elements, if uh, x, x, y, if x is a leaf and y is a leaf, then connect them by uh, blue relation, because this formula would not be guarded. Yes? But we can, for example, say that each, uh, each leaf is connected by a blue relation to a root. Hmm? We have 2 to the, to the, two to the, two to the n leaves. Uh, unfortunately, we cannot enforce in, in the guarded fragment that there is exactly one root, yes, because it is, it is impossible. We always take, uh, always in the, in the guarded fragment can take uh, another copy of the same model, and this is, this is a model. So the situation in, in models may be like this, that we have several roots, each of them with, a complete, with its complete binary tree, and uh, some of the leaves uh, connect to the first root, some of the leaves connect to the second root. But of course, we will always have, have uh, a ratio one root per two to the two to the n leaves. So at least one of the classes must be of size at least doubly exponential with respect to n. Of course, if we if we allow for uh, infinite models, then we can uh, then we can uh, and, and then we can always construct mm. uh, classes exp exponentially bounded, since we simply, ca instead of taking this route, we, we can construct a new one and, and go on. But in finite models, we can enforce doubly exponentially uh, bounded classes. Mm. So what, in, in, the, in the remaining part of the talk, I will use a notion of a counting type. And the counting type, the purpose of counting types is to count the, the number of realizations of one types in equivalence classes. So formally, a counting type is a function from the set of one types over the signature of, of, of a formula phi, of the formula phi we consider. Uh, and this function returns natural numbers. And we, use, we, we, think in, we think about this in this way, that if we have a class C, and say EI class C, equivalence class C in, in a model A, uh, then its counting time simply says, for, for, for a given one type, this counting, its counting time says how many times uh, this type is realized in this class, how many elements of this one type um, we have in this class. Uh, we will say that a counting type is admissible for EI classes with respect to, to, this, to this formula phi. Um, if there exists an EI class C of ex realizing exactly this counting type, which satisfies this part of the formula re related to EI. Yes? So in other words, uh, a counting type is admissible for, for EI classes if we can build 
uh, EI classes, which from local point of view uh, are allowed to appear in models of, of uh, phi. And admissibility is a, is a, of a counting type is a simple property. We can simply, for, for a given counting type, we simply guess as the structure yes, and, and perform model checking. So this is an, 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 it is not, not hard to check uh, if, uh, if a counting type is admissible. So uh, to explain my approach, I will first uh, show you a very simple, a very simple idea. So in, in a simplified case. So the simplified case is that we assume that we have a bounded number of admissible counting types. This may not be true in general, yes, because uh, in these counting types, we do not know a bound on, uh, on, on the values, which are uh, values of, 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 this fun of the function. Yes? So potentially, we may have infinitely many uh, admissible counting types. Mm. But let us assume that there is only some bounded number of them. For example, we may assume that we are interested in satisfiability in models with exponentially bounded classes only. Yes, then, then the number of counting types will be bounded uh, doubly exponentially. Yes, if we have exp exponentially many possible, um, exponentially many elements, um, then the values of this function are all values of, uh, of the functions which are counting types are also exponentially bounded. So that there, might, there may be at most doubly exponentially uh, many such uh, classes. Uh, and so, and we construct, we, we, we construct a system of equations. For each counting type, which is admissible, for EI class, we introduce a variable, an unknown. Yes, so we have unknowns for EI, E1 classes, unknowns for E2 classes, for, for types of E1 classes, for types of E2 classes, and so on. Uh, and what we say by our equations, we only say an obvious thing, which, which has to be uh, satisfied in every model, that each one, for each one type, T, and uh, uh, each uh, equivalence relation, EI, EJ, uh, there is, this, this type is realized exactly the same number of times in E1 classes and in E2 classes. This is an obvious thing because every element is a member of an E1 class, is a member of E2 class, yes. EI, EI, EJ in general. So this is the obvious, obvious thing which should be uh, satisfied in the model. And we claim that this, is, uh, this condition is, uh, that, that, that this is if and only if. So we, if we, we claim that phi has a model if and only if the constructed system of equations has a non-negative integer solution. Okay, let me show you an example. Uh, assume that we have one possible, we have two, two equivalence relations, E1 red and E2 blue, and there are um, three possible uh, admissible counting types for E1 classes, uh, one with yellow and, and one yellow and one green, one type, blue and red, one uh, just a singleton class with uh, a green relation, and uh, admissible, and there is only one admiss admissible type for blue classes with red, blue, two yellow, and two green elements. So what our system of equations says, it simply says that from the point of view of uh, red one types, the number of re realizations of X in the model should be equal to the number of realizations of B because these are the only, only types which, uh, in which uh, red element appear. S similar equation is obtained from the, if, if we uh, write an equation from the point of view of blue uh, one type. From the point of view of uh, yellow one type, we see that every realization of X requires two realizations of A, yes, because we have two, two yellow types in, in this uh, X type of, of a class. And from the point of view of green elements, of green elements, uh, every realization of, of X requires two classes with green elements, so it may be A or C. So this is why we say 2X is equal to A, a plus C. And obviously, if there is a model using these this admissible counting types, then this model has to satisfy, then, then uh, th this system of equation has a solution. Yes. Uh, in the opposite direction, consider an arbitrary solution. For example, we may say, we, we may take the solution with one realization of X, two realizations of 
A is equal to 2, B is equal to 1, and C is equal to 0. This is a solution to the system. And now let us see that we can construct a model with exactly, this, with exactly such types of classes, but not with uh, exactly this number of realizations of these classes. Because sometimes, mm, for example, uh, this solution suggests exactly one realization of this, this uh, blue class, bl blue type of, uh, this type of blue class. Mm. However, mm, there are some red classes with two elements. In, in, in our language, we may enforce that, uh, we may have formulas which enforce that every pair of classes, blue class and the red class, have at most one element in common. In fact, we obtained this property in our construction yesterday, but this property can be, can be enforced. For example, we may say that every pair of elements which is connected by blue relation uh, is also connected by an auxiliary symbol B, which is not required to be equivalence. And similarly, every pair of elements which is connected by red relation satisfies, is not connected by B, yes? Then we cannot intersect two classes in more than one element, yes? But, but then, because because then this, this pair of elements should be connected by B and not connected by B simultaneously. Yes. So in this case, it may happen that we, we won't be able to construct uh, a model with just one equivalence class of this type, yes? because this class requires two, may require two, uh, two different uh, classes of type X. But what can we do? What, what, what we are sure after uh, when we have the, the solution of the system? We may con uh, uh, let us define the no a notion of uh, the base set for this solution, the base set of elements. The base set of elements uh, contains uh, as many elements of uh, particular one types as is suggested by the solution. So the solution suggests that there will be one class of type X. So in the base set, and, and no, no other uh, blue classes, yes? So in the suggested set, set of one types is one red, one blue, two yellow, and two green, yes? Similarly, we, we, may, we may do it from the point of view of uh, red classes. The suggested solution is A is equal to two, B is equal to one, C is equal to zero. So we will have uh, two green elements, because A is equal to two, two yellow elements, four, uh, no, sorry, no. Uh, two green, two yellow, uh, one red, one, uh, one blue, yes, because B is equal to one. Of course, the, the base sets co co computed using uh, solutions for blue classes and red classes have to be equal, is because we constructed this, our system in such a way. And what we know about this base set, our, uh, the solution of the system guarantees that, that this, this base set can be uh, divided into proper, into admissible one, uh, E1 classes and into admissible E2 classes independently. Yes? So what we do, we simply take some number of copies, it's six copies in this case. We have, we have six elements in this set, so we take six copies, and we arrange them into, in a grid in this case, in such a way that every column of this grid and every, uh, uh, every horizontal line in this grid, uh, every row in this grid is uh, a copy of this base set. Such an arrangement can be easy, easily obtained just by starting from an, from, from the, col the first column and putting this base set in an arbitrary order and then just shifting the picture one row down. Yes. And, and now we can uh, divide columns into blue classes and uh, rows into one classes, exactly as suggested by this solution. Yes. So after this construction, every element has two admissible classes constructed, yes, e blue and, and red, so everything is okay. Remember that, that, that for, for simplicity, I uh, removed those formulas which require non-equivalent non witnesses. This approach, of course, can be, can be easily generalized. If we have uh, more than two equivalence relations, then we simply construct multi-dimensional grid, grids in this way. Okay, so this is, this is the, the idea. And the problem is that we do not know a bound on the number of counting types. This may be infinite, so in particular, we, we, would, we would have infinitely many variables. Yes, so, so it would be a problem. Instead of this, um, we will use some approximations of these of this, uh, counting types. And uh, 
before I define this approximation, let me, let me first just, just formalize one, one lemma which we will use. So uh, we, uh, we, say that, we say that a counting type safely extends another counting type uh, if it preserves the number of uh, one types which are realized zero on one types in this real, which are suggested by this type. Yes? So if, if, if theta of t, is, is of, of t is equal zero or one, then theta prime is also equal zero of, or one. If theta of t is greater than one, then theta prime of t is simply greater or equal to theta of, of t. Yes. Of course, this definition has a, a close con connection to the notion of, of these royal types, ro royal types in, in models of level two formulas. Yes, simply uh, that if we have a class of type theta, and uh, then, then we can extend it to a, safely extend it to a class of type theta prim, prime, which, which still, from local point of view, is a proper class for for, this, for, for the given formula. Yes. And this is this is, recall lemma lemma ten is this lemma about adding adding uh, single realizations of non-royal types to FO2 classes. And this is just a simple application of this lemma. Yes, if we have uh, if we have a class C is just a, a model which is an equivalence class of EI, it, this, it satisfies this fragment of the formula related to EI, then if we take a counting type, theta prime, which extends the counting type of, of uh, C, and then we can construct a model of, of this formula phi EI, which has exactly time theta prime, by adding the required elements as many times as we want. So this is one thing. And another thing is the notion of M counting type. So instead of using exact counting, counting type, we'll use some approximations. We'll count up to some M. M counting type, M is a parameter, is a function of, ta of, of the type take, uh, from, from the set of one types to, to the set 0, 1, up to M. And the interpretation is that uh, theta, if theta of t, t is equal to M, then it means then, then in the class there is at least m elements of, the, of, of type t. m minus 1, m minus 2, 1 and 0 means exactly, m means at least. Now, uh, lemma 4 uh, was, is, is this, this small model construction for FO2 formula. And using this, 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 this construction, we may prove that uh, uh, there exists m uh, exponentially bounded in, this, in the length of the formula. Uh, such that if we have a class admissible for, for EI classes, uh, uh, a class, sorry, a class satisfying phi of uh, phi with superscript EI, mm, and its M counting type is theta, then there exists a class C prime which has exact time equal to this theta, yes? So if there is M realizations, at least M realizations, then in this new structure there will be exactly M realizations. And this is the same construction as, as in on this lemma four. Okay, so these are two, uh, two auxiliary lemmas. And now what, how we construct the system of, this time the system of inequalities. Uh, so we introduce variables, this time for M counting types, which are admissible for, for EI. So again, we check if, if, such an, if there is a class with exact uh, counting type, uh, we've, we've given exact counting type like, like this, with at most m realizations, yes, of, of every one type. Mm. Uh, what is the number of, of these m counting types? It is doubly exponential in the size of the formula phi, yes, as we observed later, because we consider a similar situation. Mm. What will be the, our procedure? We will guess the, set, guess the set of one types which will be realized in the model of, of, of the given formula phi and write some, in, some inequalities. Uh, there will be two kinds of inequalities. The first kind of inequalities are just inequalities which ensure that uh, elements of, of these guessed one types will appear in the model. And the second, the second one will, uh, the second kind of uh, inequalities will say something about royal types. So uh, now let us, let us redefine this no notion royal. Uh, we say that a one type T is royal for EI classes with respect to the formula phi, of course, if 
from every counting type admissible for EI has at most one realization of this type. Right? So such, such a royal type, a, a type is royal for E1 classes, which in, 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 uh, if, if a type is royal for E1 classes, say, then we probably won't be able to add additional realizations of this type to, to the given class, given admissible class. Uh, and uh, what kind of equations we write, if T is royal for EI classes, then for every uh, other equivalence relation, we write inequality which say that T is realized in, uh, is suggested by, by M counting types uh, for EI classes at most as many times as for EJ classes. Okay, this may be unclear, I, I suppose, so let us observe, let us, let us look at an example. Uh, assume, again, assume that we have two admissible M counting types. So this means that in, in our model we allow for such classes, and uh, these classes may, may be further extended by, in this class may be extended by yellow elements, this may be extended by green elements. This one, in fact, also can be extended by yellow elements, but green elements and yellow elements because we know a pattern which allows to connect to, to uh, yellow element inside a, a class. And we have three admissible M counting types for uh, red classes and what, what we say in our system of equations. So uh, red, from the point of view of red element, red element is royal for both red classes and uh, blue, cl uh, blue classes and red classes. In each class it appears at, mo at least, uh, at most, once. So what we say, we want to guarantee that the number of realizations of, uh, oh, uh, the, definition, uh, the definition from the previous slides implies that we should construct two inequalities which will produce such, a, such an equality, yes? Uh, if we realize such a type, uh, then we have to realize theta type A. So x, x plus y should be equal to A. Yes? Mm, from the point of view of blue elements, the blue, uh, uh, yellow elements, of course, yellow elements are royal only for E2 classes. Oh, sorry, E2, for, for red classes. It should be E1. Uh, for red classes, because mm, in each, each such red class, there is at most one realization of uh, yellow element. For um, blue classes, uh, yellow is not royal, yes, because we have a class, admissible class with, admissible type of class with two yellow elements. So this is, this is the second kind of uh, inequalities. The first kind of inequalities are, are those inequalities which say that our uh, three, three one types, assume that we guess that there will be these three one types in the model, and we ensure that they will be in a model, so we say that uh, x plus y is greater or equal to 1, x plus y is greater or equal to 1, so, so, and x plus y, y is greater or equal to 1. This, this ensures that in blue classes we will have red, yellow, and green, and the same we do for red classes. Okay, an example solution is 1, x is equal to 1, y is equal to 1, a is equal to 2, b is 4, and c is 0. Uh, now, how to construct a model? Again, we will define the base set for, for this solution. Uh, but this time, the base set will be defined in a slightly more complicated way, namely, uh, how many elements of red type we have in the base set? We look how many type, times these elements, these red elements are suggested in, by our uh, uh, solution in blue classes, so twice, yes, and how many in uh, red classes? No, also twice. So to the base set, we, we take gr uh, maximum, ma maximum from these two numbers, in this case two, yes? But for uh, yellow, uh, yellow classes, we have, uh, in blue classes, uh, yellow elements are suggested three times, and uh, in red classes, they are suggested uh, one, two, and, and four, six times. So to the base set, we take six yellow elements. So in our case, the base set is uh, like this. This is a, a single line, it's just a base set, yes? So a base set contains two red elements, six yellow elements, and uh, five green elements. 
Again, five, five is uh, the number suggested by blue classes here, and, and red classes suggest four, four uh, green elements. So we take five, five, five copies. And what we know, uh, wh what we know, uh, what is guaranteed by this solution? Uh, the solution guarantees, the system was created in, in such a way that, the, solu that uh, the base set may be divided, not divided, in ba the base set we may distinguish one copy of class of type X and one copy of type, time, type Y. And we have enough elements of appropriate colors for this. Here is this E1 class and here is, uh, sorry, this blue class and here is this another blue class, a blue class of type X, class of type Y. And similarly, for E2 classes, we have enough elements to, to have two classes of type A, uh, two, uh, A and uh, four classes of, of type B. They are, they are, they are presented here. Yeah. This is because in our base set, we, we, also, we always mm, took this, this greater value of elements such as, uh, from, from those suggested by E1 classes or E2 classes. Uh, of course, we may have some elements left. Yes, if in this, we have three elements. If we divide, class, uh, divide the base set into E1 classes, we have three yellow elements uh, left. If we divide into E2 classes, we have one green element left. Left means without its own class. But uh, using our lemma, we can simply add these elements to a class which contains, uh, which contains yellow elements. Because we are sure that th those uh, remaining elements are not, uh, have, not, uh, have types which are not royal. Because for royal type, types, we always have a, have a quality, yes? And all of them will be taken to, or, or royal elements are taken to uh, this class is suggested by the solution. The elements which, which remain must have non-royal types. And if they have non-royal types, then they can be adjoined to classes uh, containing realizations of these types using our, our lemma. And we ensure that there, there will be some, such classes by, uh, by these inequalities, these kind of inequalities. Similarly, the green element, this green element may be adjoined, for example, to this class. And uh, to, con to connect these two, two green elements, we will use this pattern from admissible, uh, from admissible class of type C, which is not realized in our model at all. But we have a pattern of connections, yeah, it's a of connection. Okay, so, so this is uh, one implication, yes? If we have, if our system of equations has a solution, then uh, we can reconstruct a model. Uh, in the opposite direction, uh, we use, in the opposite direction we use, or oh, maybe I will show you this for the slides there. In the opposite direction we use this lemma, which says that for ev every class, can be approximated by a class realizing exactly its m counting type. So uh, if we have a formula and its model, mm, then we take as a solution to the system of equations the number of realize, uh, uh, if x is, a, x is a type, is a m counting type of a class, yes? So we uh, check how many times this counting type is realized in the model, this m counting type is realized in the model, how many, how many times, uh, how many classes, uh, mm, have exactly uh, this number of realizations of, 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 of uh, one types, counted up to m, yes? So, so, if, so for example, a, a class with one red, two yellow, three green and, uh, and for example, four green elements is counted as a class of counting type X. Yes? And may maybe I will skip the, skip, skip the detailed argumentation, but, uh, but this theorem, uh, this, this lemma about approximations allows us to prove that the system of equation is. Okay, so let us now think about uh, bounds of, on the size of models we can obtain this way and uh, the computational complexity of the problem. So uh, this lemma um, uh, is taken from the paper, from a pap the paper by Calvanese, but in fact it is built on the classical results on system of equations by Papa Dimitriou. So let us assume that we have a system of linear inequalities or, equ or equations with n unknowns, 
uh, M, M inequalities or, 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 or equalities and, and, and unknowns and coefficients are uh, absolute value of a co of coefficients is bounded by A, then this system has a non-negative integer solution. So of course, we are, we are interested in non-negative integer solutions yes, because these are numbers of realizations of classes, so it has to be natural numbers. So the system has uh, such a solution. Then it also has a solution whose, uh, in, in, in which values are bounded by such, what, such, such, such a number. It is not hard to see that in our case, this, this number is doubly exponential because m, the number of, uh, of uh, uh, inequalities, the number of inequalities depends on the number of one types. We construct two inequalities for each one type. We have, uh, n, uh, we have doubly exponential number of unknowns because unknowns are m types of classes, m, m counting type of types of classes and uh, coefficients are exponential because in, in each such m-counting type we have at most exponentially many realizations of each, each uh, atomic type, yes? So, so in fact, um, we have doubly exponentially bounded solution. So doubly exponentially bounded number of types of classes but in each, 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 in each class we will, we will to, to each class we initially put, put only uh, exponential number of elements. So, so the whole number, the total number of elements will be doubly exponential. And this is this, is this theorem. So, so uh, our construction from the beginning of this talk when we constructed a model of double exponential size was essentially optimal. Yes. Every finitely satisfiable formula will have a model bounded doubly exponential, which follows from, from this construction. Okay, but we want to obtain a non-deterministic exponential bound on the, si on the complexity of the satisfiability problem. Mm. And this theorem suggests a simple procedure, just guess a model of double exponential size and check that this is, it is a model, yes? But this procedure is non in, in dub doubly exponential non-deterministic time. So well, how to obtain uh, single exponential time? Uh, observe that our equations are of of, of very simple form. They are just um, C1 x1 plus C2 x2 plus, plus C3 x3 and so on, greater or equal to, to a number B, which in our case is either 0 or 1. All, all of our inequalities can be rewritten to such, such a form. Yes? So it is not hard to see that instead of solving um, such a system of equations over integers, we can solve it over, over real numbers. Yes? At this moment, we are not interested in constructing the structure for, for formula phi, but only checking if this formula, if this, if this, if this model exists. Yes? So we only want to solve the system of equations. Yes. We guess the set of one types, which will be realized, and this is exponential of exponentially bounded information, and then construct a system of equations and uh, try, to, uh, try to solve it. Yes? But instead of solving it over integers, let's solve it over uh, real numbers. Of course, if there is a solution over real numbers, then we can multiply this solution by the product of denominators in, all, for all, in the solution for all variables, and we obtain integer numbers then. And th those numbers obviously will satisfy these this inequalities. Because they are of very simple form, greater, equal, or, or something. Yes. If, if, those real if we multiply this side by, by some number, then of course, by, by some uh, positive number, of course, then the relation will be still retained. Okay, so we may solve the system over, uh, over real numbers instead of integer numbers, and mm, we can use a simple fact from linear algebra, uh, because uh, what, what is the shape of our, our system of equations? We have exponentially many uh, equali uh, inequalities, and doubly exponentially many uh, variables. Uh, inst uh, instead of, uh, of course, uh, of course, uh, such a system, if such a system of inequalities has a, has a solution, then we also can construct a system of, of equalities, which will have a solution. So let us think about equalities. And in linear algebra, we know that, from linear algebra, we know that the rank of this matrix 
is at, at most 2 to the n, yes? So we can, we, we can um, move all the variab uh, variables. We can find a non-zero, maximal non-zero minor. We can move all the, uh, in a, uh, all the variables uh, not belonging to its minor to, to, to the right side of the system and substitute them for zero, yes? And we will, have, we will still have a solution uh, in which only, only those elements, th only those variables will be non-zero. Yes, so the theorem is, uh, the, theorem. the observation is that uh, if we have such a system of equation over real numbers, uh, then we can always find, which has a solution, then we can always find a solution in which only exponentially many unknowns uh, has non-zero values. Yes, and all the others are zeros. This can be done for real numbers, not for integers, yes, because uh, we require that this, this uh, system is over, to do, to do this thing, we, we want this system to be over a field, yes, not, no, on, not just over the ring. A ring. Uh, so what is our algorithm now? We guess, we guess which types, will, which, which variables will be non-zero in our solution. So we guess the set of one types, and we guess the set of uh, those n counting types which will correspond to non-zero variables. And now we have only, and, and we construct the system, but using only those variables, yes? So we have a system with 2 to the n uh, equations and 2 to the n variables. We solve it over reals, too, so we can do it in deterministic time, though deterministic polynomial time, so we finally get, uh, oh, it is not important that it's deterministic because we have non, a non-deterministic non algorithm because we guess something, yes? To find, we guess exponential number of information, construct a system of equation, and solve it, all of this in exponential time. Okay? Mm. Okay, so, uh, I have a comment here uh, that this technique of uh, describing models by system of equations or inequalities is, is very often used. It's, it's, it has been used in many, many, uh, many examples. I just mention two things which are related to, to, our, to our talk because they consider two variable logics, in fact, yes? Uh, the, first, the first two papers are about <coughs> description logics with uh, number constraints, yes? Description logic with number constraints. The second one, just two variable logic with counting quantifiers, or, or one, one variable logic with counting quantifiers. So, for, for example, uh, one variable logic with counting quantifiers, it, it, it has quantifiers of the form for all x. Uh, there exists at least m, uh, m, m x such that, or there exists at most m x some such that, yes? So in this case, these uh, this systems of equalities are even more uh, more natural, I think. So, uh, and it, it was used uh, by Ian Pratt, this approach was used by Ian Pratt Hartman to produce a, a, an, easy, an easy proof of, of uh, a simple proof of the two variable, of decidability of two variable, uh, two variable fragments with counting. Uh, not, not of decidability, but of uh, next time com upper complexity bound. Yeah, the, previous, the previous proof also by Ian Pratt-Hartman was much more, much more complicated, and the previous results implied uh, only decidability without, without uh, precise complexity bounds. Okay, in this description logics, description logics uh, are also based on two variable logics and, and these uh, numerical restrictions correspond to counting quantifiers. These are, these are similar things. Okay, so maybe I, ha I have two more, two more things to show. Maybe I will start from the third one. Mm. Uh, the second, I, I will just state the second one. Yes? So the, the statement of the next theorem is that the satisfiability problem for two-variable logic, or even to the guarded fragment with equivalence relations, which can be used outside guards. Yes? In, our, in our construction, we, uh, we use the, the fact that uh, equivalence relations are only in guards. So if we allow them outside guards, then we can show undecidability using three equivalence relations. So this, this is one thing. And to show that we are very, very close to the border between decidable and undecidable, 
uh, we can also show that uh, two variable logic with full two variable logic with two equivalence relations is decidable. Yes, so, so three equivalence relations are undecidable and two are decidable. And let I am not going to, to, to show you details of the theorem, but I would like to uh, show you some crucial differences um, in this situation and in, in our situation, two variable guarded fragments with equivalence guards. So what are, what are the differences? Um, th th this problem is much harder, yes? What are the differences? Uh, the first thing is that we, of course, we may enforce non-empty intersections of E1 and E2 classes. Because we may simply say that, for example, there exists an element, uh, for, for every x satisfying P, there exists an element Y connected to, to this x by E1 and connected by E2, yes? There are no, there are no restrictions on the pattern of, there, there are no guards, in fact, here, necessarily. So this is the first thing. Uh, another thing, we may say that some types of classes, regardless of this notion of type, but some types of classes are uh, realized exactly once in our model. For example, we may say that every pair of, uh, for every element satisfying R are contained in one E1 class, yes? Then we cannot, cannot, when we build our models, we cannot take a copy of these classes because this is forbidden. We could also always do it in, in the guarded fragment. Here, we won't be able to do it. Of course, uh, a simpler way of, way of doing it is, is just saying that there is a, a exactly one element satisfying P in the whole model, yes? Which, which, is, which can be done without equivalence relations. Then, then both its classes will be unique in some, in some sense. Uh, it appears that we may even, if we consider a general satisfiability problem, we may even, con we'll even enforce infinite classes this time. Uh, remember that in the case of two variable guarded fragment with equivalence guards, we had, uh, we could always build models with exponentially bounded classes in the, in the general satisfiability case. Uh, it is also much harder to deal with, with free witnesses, with those witnesses which, uh, which uh, lie not, uh, in, not in the equivalence class of, of a given element. Uh, so there are some, some, uh, some complications. Mm. In fact, we can enforce mm, triply exponentially, uh, models of triply, triply exponential size this time using this, using, uh, this, 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 mm, this fact that we may have some non-trivial intersection of classes. This is the picture, the same picture we saw uh, pro uh, previously. This time, we consider those bullets to be non, not just individual elements, but intersections containing two to the n elements each. And uh, having such an intersection, we may mm, encode in such an intersection a number from the set two to zero up to two to the two to the n. Because we have, uh, simply we have, two to the n elements, and we may use an additional binary, uh, unary symbol, which works as zero, one, yes? And we have a binary representation of uh, a number from, from the set zero up to two to the two to the n. And uh, having, in, in FO2, we can, we can uh, say that two intersections connected by, say, blue relation uh, and code values which differ by one. This is not obvious, but, but not, 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 not difficult, just, just a complicated pattern of quantifiers, some, some reusing of variables, and it can be done. Mm. So, so we may say, uh, we, may enforce, we may enforce full binary trees of doubly exponential uh, depth. And then we may again say, say uh, as, similar, as, as previously, we may say that all leaves are in one blue class, for example. This time we do not even need to, to use this route. We may simply say that if an element is, is, a, is a leaf, which can be checked somehow, then if a pair of elements, uh, in bo if, if both elements uh, from, from, this, from this pair are leaves, then they are connected by blue re relation. So we may have models of triply exponential size and classes of triply exponential size. Uh, what is the idea of, of the proof? Uh, so, so the first thing is natural. We do not want to deal with these intersections, so instead we will treat them as individual elements. But to do this, we have to prove that every model 
uh, every formula which is satisfiable is satisfiable in a model with small intersections, and it can be done. So, so, uh, so now, uh, such, such small intersections, we have, we have uh, so we have exponentially bounded intersections, so, so there is two to the, two to the, doubly exponential number of isomorphism types of possible, possible intersections, yes? And we will treat them as elements. But we have, but now we have two to the, to the, two to the, two to the n uh, possible types of elements. And we proceed similarly, as in the case of two variable guarded fragments with equivalence guards. Mm. Of course, there is a lot of, a lot of details. Some of them are quite interesting, some of them are quite annoying, but, but uh, finally the procedure is to guess some information of doubly exponential size and construct a system of linear uh, inequalities. But this time, the system is uh, larger. It has, this is one thing that is larger, of course. It has two to the two to the n variables and two to the two to the two to the n, sorry, and uh, doubly exponentially many vari uh, equations or inequalities and triply exponentially many variables. So the situation is similar uh, as, previous, as previously, but, but the problem is, uh, oh, the problem is, um, that we may hey, that we do not have this nice form of, of equalities. So of course, of course, we may solve we may solve this system in triply exponential time, triply exponential non-deterministic time, uh, obtaining three next time upper bound on the on the complexity. But we want to obtain two next time, one exponential lower, and the difference uh, in comparison with this guarded fragment is that we will require. Uh, equations of the form x plus y plus z is uh, not greater than, than one. These are, these, that they are because we may say that, uh, they appear because we may say that some types of classes appear exactly once in the model. So we simply say types of, types of classes of our, our, our elements. So we may have something like this. So may, maybe sometimes we have that x is equal exactly once, maybe sometimes we have that x plus y plus z is not greater than one. And this trick with, with taking uh, real solution and multiplying it by denominators will not work because it will not preserve, not necessarily preserve this kind of uh, inequalities. But it appears, so, so we have to, we have to uh, solve the system of equation over integers this time. And it appears that there is a similar theorem, not, not, not that simple like, like this one, but uh, Eisenbrandt and Schmoning sh sh could show that if such a system of equation has such a system of equation with not too many equations but many variables has a, has a solution that it, it, it has a solution in which only polynomially many with respect to the number of equations polynomially many uh, variables is non zero so exactly what what we what we want yes but this is slightly this is not this is also not not very difficult theorem but uh, not that obvious as in the case of real numbers so we proceed analogously yes we Mm. we guess which uh, variables would, would be non-zero and construct the system of, of equations ignoring those unnecessary variables so we will have doubly exponentially many variables and we have to solve this system uh, over integers but this, the problem of solving system over, over integers is in NP yes? so, so everything is okay we finally finish in doubly exponential non-deterministic time a lower bound, bound can, be also, uh, can be also shown uh, it was shown by Ian Pat Hartman uh, using, using a similar trick to, to the one, uh, this, this one with count, this trick with counting, yes, to construct, to construct a grid of two to the n uh, of doubly exponential size. So the problem is two next time complete. Uh, okay, so I, I, have some, I have some more time, so I will go back to, to this undecidability uh, theorem. And try. Okay, so now I will try to explain why two variable guarded fragment becomes undecidable if we allow equivalence relations outside guards. Uh, so uh, I will use 
a reduction from, from domino systems. A domino system is just uh, uh, a tuple consisting of set of domino tiles and some restrictions on horizontal and vertical connection. And uh, the problem is to, to tile uh, a grid of uh, grid uh, n times n, preserving those, those constraints. Yes? So, so we, we, we simply say, uh, these constraints say which pairs of domino types may, uh, may be horizontal neighbors, which types of domino types may, may be vertical neighbors.